All right, guys, so welcome to part six of the Medieval Stormwall tutorial. And I think I messed this up in the last one a bit, as I should have shown how you can populate the whole side of the wall. And I think I just did the bottom here. But that shouldn't be a big problem, as yeah, it's just repetition, so it's the same all over again. And in this video, we're going to focus on the top stones here, and I will show you how you can make those, also how you can sculpt such cracks. We'll also apply some alphas onto them. And I think after this one, there will be two more ZBrush video on the wall. So in the next one, we're going to wrap up the whole wall. And then we're going to do some vertex painting in the one after that one. And after that, we're going to put the whole thing into InstaLot and remesh it. And after that, we're going to use InstaMat to texture it. So in case you didn't watch the last videos and don't know how to get to the step here, I'd recommend to just check them out. And yeah. Other than that, let's just start. Okay, so we now finished this one side of the wall. And as you can see, I already sculpted a bit of details onto this stone here. And I wanted to show you this, but I lost the recording, unfortunately. So we're just gonna sculpt another one as we'll need a second one nonetheless. And why I'm doing this, I probably should have done this before because um, when we're now gonna apply those rocks to to the other sides of the wall, we get to quite a high poly count and it will get a bit laggy maybe. Depends on your machine as well, but we'll have like, I don't know, maybe 100 million polygons or so. So we do the fine detail on those plates first and then we're gonna make our life a bit easier by duplicating this and varying this a bit. But let's first do one of those. So let's choose this and solo it out. And now after we solo it out, we go to um, Geometry again and to Dynamesh. Let's bump up the resolution to like 2000 again. And I just want to do one pass so we will be working with Dynamesh completely and without subdividing it later on. That should suffice for those. Um, and yeah, the process is quite similar to the other rocks. So we use Trim Smooth Border at first. And let's just chisel up the edges here a bit. And we want to vary a bit, so we, won't we want to have a few sharper edges as well. And a, few and a few places where we really break this up quite much. So let's just chisel up the edges here. This will be probably a bit faster than the rocks as we don't need as much details here. Just like this. And... I won't do this bottom part for now. I will do this later on. So we first focus on the um, on the top. And when you do that with this Trim Smooth Border Brush, it's always a good idea to go to this um, to this to the flat spots here and press Alt for the negative direction of the Trim Smooth Border, so we can sharpen up the edges like that. And that often looks quite nice. Again, depends on the rock you are making. But for this one, it looks quite good, I think. So after chiseling up the edge, we go in here and sharpen this up. Maybe not everywhere, so we have a bit of variance. So we go here, do it here a bit, then maybe here. So in this spot, we have a softer edge. We could also also bring them together a bit on other at other spots. So again, it's all about variants. But we're considering this to be quite an old wall, and that's why I make quite some heavy damage on that. And in case I didn't mention this before, I think for stuff like that, the general for ZBrush. I really recommend to use a tablet as it's quite annoying to do that with the mouse and you don't have the pressure sensitivity, etc. And it doesn't have to be an expensive tablet. I mean, I started with a, with a simple Wacom um, Small, not the Intuos Pro, but the, um, but the regular Wacom. But you should also consider when you want to buy a tablet that you match basically your screen so for bigger screens, a bigger tablet is recommended. So I'm currently having a 27 inch screen and using a Wacom Intuos Pro M. But I also didn't really have any issues 
to work with the small one. So let's go to this side. Maybe we do a bigger, bigger one here. So again, it's quite repetitive again. So if you know the basics, you can just go on and chisel up your edges. And on this one, I also don't want to have two sharp edges. So we can just chisel them up and then go in with the um, odd version of the brush, basically, to bring them more together. So we want basically to have a bit beveled edges here. As again, should be quite an old wall, so you won't have perfectly sharp edges. And in general, when you think this is made of cement or something, you won't have perfectly sharp edges anyway. But yeah, we want to break that up quite a bit. Then maybe some bigger grooves again. So always make sure to vary a bit. So now we basically finish the top of the rock or the, the stone. So I'm going to do the bottom part now and speed it up and get back to you when I'm keep um, when I start working on the details like the cracks. Alright, so as you could see, I didn't want to overdo it at the bottom, or not in all parts at least, so that we have quite much variance in it. And as with the rocks that we used for the wall, we will also duplicate this and use it upside down for, um, for an additional rock. And for those edges here, I like to do the same that I did with the rocks, so picking up the clay built up with um, the strokes set to spray and with that alpha. The square one and then break this up a bit just the edges i really don't want to overdo that and we will also get some more details with textures when we're gonna texture this so i don't really want to overdo it so just a bit of details here maybe smooth that up a bit when you have something that doesn't look as nice Maybe we could do that for the bigger groves here as well, just slightly. But again, that is really unnecessary, basically. But let's just do it a bit. Maybe on the other side as well. All right, then let's introduce some cracks. And for the beginning, I like to use this Orb Cracks brush here. This is a custom brush from from an artist called, I hope to pronounce this correctly, um, his name is Michael Vincente. And it's a really great artist and he has those brushes to download for free. And I'll link them in the description as there are some of the nicest brushes you can have for cracks, etc. And they are also used quite widely in stylized art. So if I didn't pronounce him correctly, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can also use the damn standard brush, but I like this more. So let's just use that and do a small brush size. Maybe let's increase the intensity. And those won't be too fine cracks because when we want to do them really fine, we need to have more resolution on that. But yeah, I don't really want to increase the count, the poly count here. Maybe by one. So is Ctrl and D. We'll increase the poly count. And as I did quite heavy cracks on the other one, I don't want to overdo it on this one. So this will be just that. And maybe to this side as well. So it's a continuous crack to here. Then we go in and use the trim smooth border. 
then by holding Alt, we're gonna make this a bit smaller. You can also go in here a bit and brighten it up at some points and chisel it up like we did with the other edges. Again, we always want to have some variance. And as you can see, in some places we have a bit too much, or we added a bit of clay to the to the surface. And we can just use the trim smooth border as well and just get rid of it. So that's not really an issue. But this kind of cleanup we usually do at the end. So I first sculpt the crack like I would like to have it. Again, at some spots we maybe want to have it really thin. And in other places we want to have it thicker. Like this. That looks a bit too round for me. That looks quite nice. Then we're going to do this one. And there are of course different methods like you can how you can sculpt cracks. And mine is probably the most time consuming, but I really like to do this, it this way as I have more control over it. I think I made a short on, on a different method how you could do that. And this is also quite a nice, te nice technique, but you also have to um, work on the edges as well. Let's maybe make that thinner. Right, so what's left is this side here. As you can see, I don't really like to smoothen up when I'm doing rocks, but sometimes it just it's just necessary. So right, I think we leave this for that cracks because I have this one and it is quite a big crack on top. I don't want to have too much repetition and having all of them with such big cracks wouldn't be that good. But we can also re um, always reuse that if we want to. So let's just have this one cracked here only. So that looks quite nice already. All right, so now we want to apply some alpha maps and for that, let's go to the standard brush. And I already loaded some in. I have this stone noise here, um, which set the stroke to drag rect. We go to brush and go to auto masking and back face mask. We turn that on. We, we decrease the focus shift to minus 100. And then let's see how that looks. Way too strong. So let's turn down the intensity maybe to nine. That's still a bit strong. Let's go with three. Let's do some some of them with three. And we can always vary with the size. Let's now increase the intensity to six. Just make some stronger spots and we don't want to have this that strong everywhere as you want to have some rest or places where you have some rest on the eyes basically so i think this already looks quite good let's go to the side this is just a slight detail again when we're gonna texture that we're gonna introduce more details And as we subdivided this once, what I initially didn't want to do, the edges look a bit softer, but that's okay. Again, this is meant to be a game ready asset, so we won't have to, or we won't look at it from, from that close. Let's do this side. And this alpha map is quite, quite round, but we can cover it up like so, so that we just let them overlap. Yeah, I think that looks good. Let's see how it looks on the model here. Right, maybe we can also introduce some of those finer cracks. 
But this are details that probably won't be really visible. But let's see. It seems we don't have enough resolution for that, but basically won't need them anyway. That looks quite nice though. Again, for those really fine cracks who lack resolution. But in any case, that looks quite good, I think. Maybe let's have one here as well. Maybe let's change it to, I don't know which one was that. Nice. So that's it for this stone. And yeah, again, I said I didn't want to subdivide this, but we ended up to subdivide it anyway. So let's go to geometry and let's lower our subdivision level. Bit of the details get lost, but that's okay. We don't gonna delete them for now because maybe we want to use them with higher resolution in the end. So that's it for this video and as mentioned in the beginning in the next one we're gonna wrap up the whole wall and I will show you how you can populate the whole wall with the rocks and save some time so we will do some copy and paste but we will also try to break up the repetition and yeah then after that we're gonna do some vertex painting and then remesh it in InstaLot and texture it in InstaMat. So thanks for watching and see you next time.